morning. Welcome to Home Life Ministry once again. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. For the Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. I'll be reading from Psalms 95, verses 1 through 3. It says, Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is great. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. Thank God for the reading of his word. Father, we just thank you today, O oh God, that we come into the house of prayer, Lord God, to a house of worship, a house of favor, Lord God, with a joyful heart in our heart, knowing that you are a good father, you are a good king, you are an amazing savior, Lord God. And we just thank you today, Lord God, for once again, that we go out this year, 2020, with a joyful noise in our hearts, that we will praise you like never before, despite of all that we have seen and all that we have have experienced and gone through this 2020 experience, oh God. But this is the time to go into the new year, Lord God, with a joyful heart. Let it praise be on our heart. Let it praise still the enemy that we know that our weapon in this season is praise, oh God. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praises. Amen. We serve an awesome God. Amen. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. God is awesome. He's mighty. He's holy. He's everything we need. We're going to leave out this year with a change of mind. Amen. We're going to leave out this year not worrying about what the enemy has done. We're going to start praising God for what he can and has already done. Amen. We're going to start giving God the glory like never before. Recognizing him as a mighty God. As a God of salvation. As a God of healing. As a God of deliverer. As a God of praise. You know, this year, go out this year. Go into 2021. Not focusing on what you don't yes. have. Not focusing on yes. what you've been through. Not focusing yes. on, don't give the devil no more of your yes. mind, no more of your glory, no yes. more of your talk. Stop talking about I what should. the devil has done. And start talking more about what God can do, what God has done, what God, who God is. Start going through your house, praising him like never before. Don't let the pressure sit in your house. Don't let fear sit in your house. Don't let the enemy have territory in your house. No more in the year to come. Amen. Give God the glory like never before. Let praise be the atmosphere of your household. Let worship be the atmosphere of your household. Speak the word like never before. There is power in the name of Jesus. This is the year that we're going to begin to speak who God is. God is a man that has a character for everything we need. If we call on his name and declare who he is, we will begin to see him manifest in that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Today we're going to call up the woman of God, Pastor Linda Smith, who's going to come and bring forth an amazing word from the Lord. Give God a hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so worthy to be praised. Amen. This morning I'm going to bring you a message that the Lord gave me on Christmas morning, a topic that God gave me on Christmas morning. And I want to start with the scripture reading in Romans 12 and 2. That's the book of Romans in the New Testament, verse 12, chapter 12, verse 2, I'm sorry. Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. And it really reads, Do not be transformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good, that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I'm going to read that again, Romans 12 and 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good, that is good, and acceptable and perfect will of God. Will of God. And I'm going to use for a topic today. Lord, transform me. Lord, transform me. On Christmas morning, my husband and I was in prayer. And I heard the Spirit of God speak to me as if he desperately wanted me to obey his commandments. I've never heard God like that, speak to me like that. I felt as if I did not have a choice 
but to obey his voice. He said, Linda, tell my people I want to transform them. God wants to transform us from not where we were yesterday or this morning, but this morning, I mean earlier this morning, but this day and this day forward, God wants to transform us. And I kept hearing his voice stronger and stronger and over and over in prayer until it brought tears to my eyes as I was praying in the spirit. As I began to study, listening to Bible teachings and praying in the spirit, I finally understood what the spirit of God was saying. I want to transform my people. This pandemic has caused most of us to live in fear, isolation, and desperation. Many, many are saying that the world is coming to an end. But let me reassure you, Matthew 24 and 36 says, No man knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. However, in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52, he said, He will come in a blink of an eye. Therefore, we must be prepared. God always warned us before something happened. He said, There is nothing hidden that will be uncovered. And God told me to tell his people he wants to transform them before the Son of Man appears. There are things that are happening in the book of Revelation right now over in Jerusalem. I don't want to say what it is because I don't want to put fear in no one. But there is manifestation. There is talk. There is finances to do some of the things that are in the book of Revelation. So many of us have lost friends and loved ones. Some prepared to meet Christ. And sadly, others were not, to be honest. This emergency, this emergency from God's voice has brought such a change in my life. Because I never, ever, never, ever, never heard God speak to me in that tongue. The Spirit of God spoke strong and swift until it even hit the very core of my nature. Now I can determine, now I am determined to obey the voice of God. Even if I lose friends, I do not, I do know one thing. True friends and honest friends is what I really need. I fear God. It is time for every believer to stop holding the past of unforgiveness. It's time for every believer to stop walking in backbiting. It's time for every, unbelie every believer to walk in hatred. I can understand the unbeliever doing it, but not believers in the body of Christ. Sure, people hate you. Sure, people say things about you. Sure, people do things to you that hurt you. But have you ever thought it may not have been intentional? We are supposed to be the mature ones in the body of Christ. Galatians 5 and 22 to 23 say, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. I got to say that again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, there is no law. God wants us to be fruitful and multiply. He don't want to be a, he don't want us to be a dying plant. He wants us to be fruitful and multiply. His fruit uh, is love. Let us look at these scriptures from a different perspective. Love is a seed. It takes root in our heart and spread throughout our mind, our soul, and our spirit. Let's look at it totally different. Let's look at it as a human perspective here on earth that God is trying to speak to us and to give us a clear revelation what love is. This is not love. 
Let me say this again. Love produces a thin stem that grows to an extraordinary strong stem that holds a that holds a branch which ends up being a trunk and its piece. I thought about something when I thought about that trunk. The Bible says in Psalm that God give us hind feet. That no matter how the wind blow to knock us down, God put an angel behind us to hold us up, Hallelujah. to give us strength to stand. And in that, we obtain peace. As we water this plant in our lives with the word of God and prayer, as we water our lives with God's word and in prayer, these leaves begin to emerge, which produce long suffering. Now, when it comes to long suffering, many of us fear. And this is where Satan deceives us. Satan knows that long suffering is a life changing mechanism. Come on, man. This mechanism helps us to produce our, our challenges. This mechanism, this long suffering, automatically produces within us if the Word of God is in you. If your prayer life is where it's supposed to be, you get a, me a mechanism that produces challenges and teaches us how to live victorious and become an overcomer. Now, I'm reading what I wrote because I don't, God said, don't miss not one dot, one letter of this word. Because he want to transform his people. Life challenges will come. But Jesus warned us about offense. In Luke 17 and 1, he said, It is impossible that no offense, that no offense shall come. But woe to him, though through, though whom they come from. Satan knows when our foundation is strong, he cannot touch us. Come on, man. When you walk in the peace of God, the word of God said, Thou willest keep me. Mm. In perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because I trust in him. You can't keep your mind on Jesus. You can't keep your mind on God if you're not studying the word. If you're not praying in the spirit. If you're not in constant prayer. Prayer don't have to be a, a, a long old dialogue God. God knows we'll get into repetition prayer in a minute. But it's nothing wrong with saying, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for waking me this morning. I thank you for my family. And most of all, Lord, I thank you because you are my God. God, you gave me the activity of my limbs. Even though I'm aging and my body is getting tired, but my spirit is so strong, God. My will is so strong, God. Long-suffering produces Kindness, mm -hmm. goodness, mm -hmm. and faithfulness. Yes. You can't tell me nobody that don't go through a challenge successfully. They have a testimony. <laughs> I heard that some say, I got a testimony. Mm -hmm. 
and I just talk to God. I said, I know my neighbors hear me, but I don't worry about that. Maybe the word that I say may be a blessing to them. Satan's most ultimate goal is to replace God's love with pride. The most profound sin he gives to mankind. Mm. Satan knows if he gets you in pride, he got you. But God came to tell, really tell you today, even in your pride state, mm. even in your state of wickedness, mm. even in your state of pride, mm. even in your state where you say you're a believer, but you one way in the public and you're another way at home, God said, I want to transform you. Mm. Don't look at me as the person. Look at a vessel that God is using because he spoke to me. I couldn't believe God asked me to do this. I said, of all people, my husband should have been preaching this. Because he's the one with the meek spirit. But God said, no, I want you to preach it. Because people are going to see you transform in the days to come. Mm. And when I transform, others are transforming with me. As they hear this word, share this word with everybody. Not for the purpose of us getting more people on YouTube, but because there is a desperation call from God. There are six things the Lord hates. Seven that is detestable to him. God said that if you do more, he will spew you out of his mouth. The first one is anointed eye. A lying tongue. Mm. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that despise, divides wickedness, wicked schemes. Mm. Always plotting and scheming. Always trying to trying to uh, manipulate people to do people what they want. Mm. I told my husband, I said, well, why did this ain't tell me what they want? Why they didn't go to New York and come back? He said, well, maybe they don't know how to express themselves. I said, well, thank you, Jesus, Lord, for giving me away. So now I know how to deal with the situation. Feet that are quick to rush to evil. I remember in high school a fight broke out. Everybody run to the fight. Mm. Everybody run, run, run. Because they want to see somebody get beat up. They want to get in there and push it. Some people in the, in the midst of the crowd will sneak punches in. But don't you know God is seeing you? A false witness who calls out lies. How many innocent people are being hurt because somebody is so determined that they want to get back in there at them, they're going to lie to other people. And then the other people being weak, they have an attitude with that person. Nobody, never ever again, will make me have an attitude with nobody. If I got a problem with a person, I'm going to the person. The worst thing we can do as believers is to go share it with somebody else. Or to hold that thing in our heart. And the last one is a man who stirs up dissension among the brothers. Proverbs 66, verse 16 through 19. Come on, go read it. Proverbs chapter 6, 16 through 19. Everything that God gave me for the message today was backed by a scripture. Mm. The Good Word Translation is another type of Bible that I read that breaks it down in our language today. I'm going to read it again from the New Good News Translation version. He said, there are six things that the Lord had, even seven that are disgusting to him. Arrogant eyes, lying tongue, hands that kill innocent people. Mind deriving wicked plans. Feet that are quick to do wrong. Dishonest witness spitting out lies. And a person who spread conflict among relatives. Mm. How many families are broken today because someone stirred up conflict in the family? But God is pure. Has unpure, unconditional love. That's why when we say, I don't know why God blessing them. Because God's love is pure in his condition. Even King Nebuchadnezzar, who destroyed Jerusalem, God called him my son. I couldn't understand. 
but God wouldn't let nobody take his throne. And Nebuchadnezzar honored God. He praised God. He recognized God as the only supreme God. And Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar lived 104 years old and died. In conclusion, Colossians 3, 1, 2, 3, and 5, 8. See, the devil wants us to be in pride, but I want to conclude on how God wants to transform us. Mm. He said, how God transform us? It's in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and 5, 8. If then you are risen with Christ, Woo. If you come to God, I don't say join the church. I don't say get the right hand of fellowship. That's not what God wants. God wants us to come before him, ask him to forgive us of all our sins, be the Lord of our life, to lead and guide us into all truth. And he wants us to seek him. He said, if then ye are risen with Christ, seek. Why do we seek? Stay. Look for God. Find God. They said, well, I heard the saying, say, what you're looking for is looking for you. Mm. <laughs> now, if you're looking for mess, mess going to find you. On, but if you're looking for God's pure, unconditional love, he will find you. Because he will draw you by his grace. Have you ever heard, heard this saying, Lord, I can't believe God saved that person. Because you remember that they did this. You remember this, they did that. They remember they did this. They did this. They call themselves a Christian. She called herself a pastor wife. He called himself a pastor. No. God said he throw our sins in the sea of forgetfulness. If I start walking east, I hope this is. If I start walking east and never stop walking east, my back is always to my past. Mm. Oh, no. I don't care if I walk a thousand miles around the earth. I travel over the seas and I'm still going east. My sins are in my past. Come on. And all I can do is press on towards the mark of the prize oh, of the yeah. high calling in Christ Jesus. I'm going to press east because that's where God is. I'm going to press east because that's where the word is. I'm going to press east. Because that's what my love is. You just keep pressing. Keep pressing. Don't worry about what people think about you. We worry too much about what people think about us. And we need to stop saying, I don't need nobody. Yes, you do. You need somebody. And let me tell you why. Because God speaks to men. And men speak to men. God bless you through people. Hallelujah. So don't tell nobody no more. I used to say that, well, I don't need nothing. I ain't worried about that. I don't care. I'm like, no, uh -uh. you need people. <laughs> you need people in influence, people of power, people who have a credibility to make you stand, to back you. He said, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sits. At the right hand of God. There's a scripture that we can pray. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Set your mind on things above and not things on the earth. Don't worry about what's going on with the coronavirus. Our weapon, we are exempted in the body of Christ. If you are in that place with God. There are so many prophecies that this is going to happen. People are going to lose jobs. The economy is going to get bad. Don't worry about that. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are exempted. Sure, some family members lost loved ones. But we can't die for nobody. They have to die for themselves. Even though we may miss them. But we're going to ask God to not let it happen to anybody else. So I don't condemn that. I don't get around and say, oh, they died because they was in sin. They, they weren't covered by the blood of Jesus. You can fool around there and say that stuff and you'll get it. <laughs> Set your mind on things above and not things on the earth. For you die 
When you gave your life to God, you died to sin. Sure, we live in this world. Sure, we have to work. Sure, we have to eat. Sure, we have to take care of things. Sure, we need a place to stay. Sure, we need automobiles. But we are dead to sin in this world. We are dead to Satan's pride because we walk in humility. My husband said something so important last Sunday. He said that it's, it's the best thing in the world for us to walk in humility. Humility is your strength to know who you are in Christ Jesus. For you died and your life is hid with Christ in God. And I want to deal with that. How Christ is in God. Therefore put, therefore put to death your members mm -hmm. which are on the earth. And then I want to close on this last scriptures. These last scriptures. First John. John, I'm sorry. John chapter 1. Verse 1 through 4. And 9. They said that your life is hid with Christ in God. John chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, verse and, and, and 9, tells us how Christ is in God. Come on, I used to wonder that. Is it God? Is it Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit? But they are one. But everybody knows their position. Everybody, Jesus knows that God is God. Even David said, my Lord, Jesus Christ, said to my Lord, sit down here until I make my enemies your foot, your enemies your footstool. Jesus was talking about God. David was prophesying of Jesus resurrecting and ascending into heaven. Yes, yes. How would David know, say, my Lord, said to my Lord, my Lord, said to my Lord. Let me say it so you understand. Yes, yes. Jesus, God, said that his son, Jesus the Christ, sit down here until I make your enemies your footstool. In John 1, chapter 1, verse, I mean, verse 1 through 4 and 9. And I emphasize certain words. So when I emphasize, I bold it, so I'm going to say it boldly. In the beginning was the Word. Mm. And the Word was with God. Come on now. And the Word was God. If you want to know God, know His Word. Mm. Yes, yes. That's all that's saying. Yes, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. If you want to understand Linda Smith, and you want to know about Linda Smith, and you want to know Linda Smith inward starts, I have to speak so you can understand me. So what God did, all this word that's down on the inside of us that's in our body today, God spoke it and gave it to men to write in the inspiration of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, this bless me. He was in the beginning with God. Who are they talking about he? Now, the last word is God, and the first word is he, so they must be talking about somebody else. Jesus Christ was in the beginning with God. I'm sorry, let me back this up. Christ was in the beginning with God. Jesus came on the scene when Jesus became a fleshly being. All things was made through him. And without him, nothing made that was made. Christ was on the inside of God when God created everything. In him, who are they talking about? Was life. The Bible said that Jesus is our life. And the life is the light of men. God was promised out letting us know that his son, his life, was going to manifest in the earth. And 
Lord decided to isolate us. But that can't stop us from tag yeah, teaming on the phone. Yeah, that on. can't stop us from having prayer together. Yes. My husband's family got together on Thanksgiving Day. And they wanted to contact him in Washington, Texas, everywhere. Everybody was on the phone. My husband's family. Nieces and nephews and, and uh, sisters and brothers. They all was on the phone. In law, I was one of them. And all they talked about was what they were thankful for. Do you know that was a praise and worship service? Yeah. Just being thankful. We need to start calling people. My husband do it all the time. I used to understand why he called everybody. Everybody. So at one time I said, you know what, man? You better stop worrying yourself worry about yourself. Because that's a gift that God gave him. And I see now that he's beginning to reach young men and encouraging them. He's not telling them to come join the church. He's telling them to encourage them so that they can make it through. Because people that you do good to will always remember you. Because you never know who you in need. You may be the word of encouragement they want. Uh, just uh, uh, this past week, somebody said, you know what? I'm, gonna call, I'm calling you because you always call and encourage somebody. And so they begin to call him. And then they, they make it a consistent thing. They make sure they get that call in. Just to encourage him. Do you know sometimes when you are encouraging people, you need to be encouraged too? And the light shined in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. That was the true light, which gives life to every man. Life to every man. And I just want to leave this last note to you. This is something I read. It says, there are nine fruits of the Spirit, and I named them all. The number nine is used 49 times in the scriptures. The number nine symbolizes divine completeness. Divine completeness. And Christ died on the ninth hour. Come on. We need to know, just to recap, that love is a seed that produces Germany and dies and sprout and give you peace. Amen. And in peace, you get what emerge called long suffering. Yes. And long suffering produce kindness, yes. goodness, and faithfulness. And when when long suffering produce kindness, gentleness, and faithfulness, then God begin to produce leaves in our lives that gives us our physical characteristic. And this Manifestation is an outcome of flowers, which is called gentleness and self-control. God loves us, but God wants to transform each and every last one of us. He don't want our lives to be, each dead leaf that you see on this represent sin, represent dying, represent the seven things that God hates mm -hmm. because you're not being nurtured. You're not being fed. Sure, it's still green, and guess what? The color of the pot is black. But God wants to, when he changed you, he even changed the color of the pot. <laughs> he let the leaves stand strong because here, eventually, leaves start dying. How do leaves start dying? You'll cuss everybody out in a matter of a second. You'll backbite in a matter of a second. You'll stop going to church in a matter of a second. Mm. You'll walk in anger. Each leaf represents something that is not of God. Each dead, dying, hanging leaf. And eventually, they turn brown and die. And then they eventually fall off. But God is so good that if I had an aloe vera plant outside, I repotted it. I want to share this with you and show you how God is. And I planted four piece, small pieces of aloe vera plant and they started turning brown. And I watered them and they still was brown. So the Lord spoke to me and said, go get some plant food. I went and started putting plant food on it and guess what? It got its nourishment and it was no longer dying. Now they're growing and green. What is your plant food? the word of God and spending time in prayer. The word of God
let's live. Let's enjoy life. This pandemic can go and it's going to come and it's going to go. But we should come out victorious. Yes. We're going to claim that we are exempted from what Satan want to do. Now, I'm not saying you won't get sick, you won't get help, but your spirit man is exempted. Come on now, listen to me. Your spirit man is exempted, meaning your heart, your mind, and your soul is exempted. Therefore, your body must follow. Don't let your, you follow your body. Allow your body to follow you. When you get in that place with God, and allow God to transform you, you will be able to look at this pandemic in a total different perspective. You will see the real source that's influencing this, and that is Satan. But remember, in Christ we live, move, and have our will be. Amen. Glory to God.